Hi, Tanja here and welcome to TMJ TV, a weekly video series aimed at real estate leaders that would love more time to grow their people and their business. Did you know that leaders spend up to 80% of their time navigating the people, performance and productivity issues within the business? Now this means their focus is off recruiting for results, delivering strategies for success and gaining the market share that they desire. Well, I'd love to help. Every single week I'm going to share insights and free downloadable tools to help you and your people achieve your success in the least amount of time. I hope you enjoy this next episode of TM. MJTV. Someone that has spent most of their time making a difference to the industry is my next guest. He is the founder of one of Australia's greatest real estate brands, McGrath. He's also the founder of the world's second biggest real estate conference on the planet, which is ARIC. He was a shark on Shark Tank, which was a television show dedicated to fueling the entrepreneurial dreams of ordinary Aussies and uh, is an extraordinary leader himself. John McGrath, thank you so much. Thank you. Well, that's a very nice introduction. Thank <laughs> For you. the opportunity to spend some time with you. I feel Pleasure. like I'm gatecrashing your party because this is the 20th anniversary and there's four and a half thousand people yeah. in that room that's learning great. from the best. Well, it's been a great event. I mean, I think Eric, you know, we're talking about leadership and personal development. ARIC has really given a lot of Australians access to what's happening around the globe, which is how it started because yeah. I went overseas and I was exposed personally to such incredible insights and technology and strategies from a lot of the overseas people that I was connecting with. Mm. I wanted to bring that back to the Australian industry. So it sort of started with 200 people in a room two decades ago and we've yeah. just got four and a half thousand next door. So it's been great. Was it always your vision for this to just be never ending or well, it's funny it, it happened by happenstance the first one when i brought half a dozen overseas american speakers across i actually was intending it to be a fairly small boutique group <laughs> yeah and then i got the bill for all the airfares and the accommodation <laughs> yeah, i thought wow this is going to send me broke <laughs> yeah. so um i actually started by just ringing around the industry some right. of my colleagues and said look you know, do you want to send some people along and we split the bill so I guess, like a lot of things, it kind of happens almost by, by luck or chance. Yeah. But then you, you feel something is growing and then we went from 200 to 400 people and then you know, over a short period of time went out to 4,500. So I, I think it would be the same as my business. When I started, mm. I just wanted to be the best that I could be and I wanted to have a little office that was the best mm -hmm. it could be. And then, you know, if you do things well over time, then momentum grows and demand grows and you have a choice. You either expand mm. and, and service the demand or do you stay small? Some people choose to stay small, which is fine. Mm. I felt that I wanted to expand the business to meet the demand. So, mm. you know, we've now got 100 offices, not one, but that wasn't necessarily my plan when I started. So I think mm. plans and visions and dreams evolve sure. as, as the people evolve. But I do think you have to start by thinking big. Yeah, your future is connected to what, are you, what is your current thinking about where you can take your business. Mm -hmm. And then it's just a matter of who do you have to become mm. to take it there? And then what do you have to do? You have to grow into the person that's sure. capable of executing the plan. Because along the way, there's going to be dead ends, there's going to be challenges, yeah. there's going to be a whole range of things. And as a leader, you have to be able to sort of cut through those things and mm. keep going in the hard times. And I remember in, in my own personal experience, many times, well, not many, but a number of times over the years, you kind of feel like, is it worth it? This is getting really hard. It was easy when I was small. Do I have to think that big? Sure. Do I really want to stretch the business? And these are all decision points. Mm. I guess you either decide, yes, I'm going to grow through this and I'm going to grow above it, or I'm going to stay here. You've definitely set a, a huge benchmark for people to achieve extraordinary standards and and deliver great service, not only to the end user being consumers, but also the internal team. Yet you're extremely humble, something I also admire about you. You don't take yourself too seriously, but you're seriously about you're serious about making a difference. How do you would still deliver those standards, yet stay grounded, because there's a big gap in between where the people have to fulfill mm. delivering on the actions. How do you do that? Well, thank you. <laughs> um, I, look, I think if I can cover this, sort of unpack them into two points. So humility for me, mm. I see success without humility is not really success. Yeah. And, I, and, and you see it all the time, that people that have done exceptionally well in whatever field they choose, but even let's say real estate, and yet they start they start believing their own press releases and they start thinking they're better and you think, wow, what a pity because 
Really, we're all the same. Yeah. Whether you're writing 100,000 GCI or 5 million, no one's better or worse. Someone's just doing better numbers. Doesn't sure. mean you're a better human being. Yeah, agreed. And it's a bit like in the marketplace. For me, whether you're a tenant renting a $200 a week apartment or whether you're the owner of a $200 million commercial building, no one should be treated less well. Mm. Everyone's important. So I think if that's part of your DNA and your compass, it's easy because, and then if you surround yourself with the right people, mm. because the right people will tell you when you're starting to not be true to your you know, value of humility. Sure. So I think that's, that's really important. And I don't think success is success unless it's attached to humility. Mm. I think standards are incredibly important. If, if you, uh, years ago, I went to a Tony Robbins conference, probably 20 odd years ago, something that rang in my ears. He said, if you want to change your life, raise your standards. Yeah. And it's a simple statement and it's true and it works. Everything you do, take it up a notch mm. and then keep taking it up a notch. Um, so whether that's the way you present your business, the quality of the people that you hire, the quality of the events that you run, mm. the sort of coffee you serve in your office, uh, everything associated with your personal brand and your business's brand and the way you do business should be on a never-ending spiral upwards. That's the challenge of leadership is to be able to maintain and apply rigorous expectation around standards. From time to time, something doesn't go the way we would expect or the customer expected. Sure. But we deal with it and you grow as a business and then you put in systems. So mm. you say, okay, well, how did that screw up? Mm. A, you've got to fix it. And then B is you've got to say, what can we do so it won't happen again or it's less likely to happen again? Yeah. So I think in terms of leadership, it's about taking responsibility. Because mm -hmm. I see a lot of leaders, they, they fire back emails. Well, you know, you didn't do that and, you know, that wasn't what we meant to do. I just own it. I say, okay, yeah. that wasn't up to your expectation. We apologise. We'll fix it. And then we go back internally and we say, well, how can we manage that going mm. forward? Mm. So I think humility, standards are really key points for leaders. In my humble opinion, if we're not making mistakes, we're not playing hard enough. Mm. You know, we're not taking a risk. We're not pushing the boundaries of what's possible. And so there's going to be growing pains. And leaders that kind of point the finger and go, well, that was wrong, really erode the level of trust that they have with their people. A philosophy I have around that is if all leaders kind of come from the place of everyone's working with the best intentions, yeah. they don't come in to actually have a, create a negative screw experience. Yeah. yeah. No one's perfect. We all can screw up from time to time. But mm. do you own it and will you fix it is the most important thing. You, you had a vision and then every time you went to grow, you knew you had a choice. I either stay here and be happy here. It seems like you were fueled by a future that was calling for greater than now. By the well, I think, of yeah, we only we only live one life. I suspect. Yeah. You know, some people think differently, but let's assume we we live one life. Um, you want to give it, I think, all you've got. Now, for different people, that will be something different. Some people want to build empires. Some mm. people just want to kind of have a different existence. But for me, is I enjoy working with people. I enjoy coaching people. I enjoy serving customers. And the more customers I can serve, and team members, and franchisees, and agents that I can help, the better. So, you know, I want to leave a legacy and I mm. think that, you know, if you can touch more people and make the world better for people, that's a better legacy than just doing it to a, a small number. So you you are definitely seen, many people call you the godfather of real estate, well, which, which I know... Sound, even older than I am, it's a, big it's, a very nice. it's a big statement. And I think that's just coming from respect for, you know, what you do to contribute to the evolution of, nice. of this industry. Who inspires you? So what leader from any any industry, anywhere, really inspires you? The, the initial inspiration for me was the late Steve Jobs. Yeah. Because, you know, I looked at what Jobs did, started from his backyard, he yeah. had a big vision, he, he saw the opportunity, he recognised that things like design, which a lot of people hadn't paid attention to, mm -hmm. there were great computer companies like IBM out mm -hmm. there, they didn't care about design, they only cared about output, and he started realising that the aesthetic and the functionality and the design is important to people. Mm. And I think nowadays, even more than ever. Mm. Um, so he was, he was just a great inspiration for me. And, you know, I look at what Barack Obama, you know, I look yeah, at wow. him and I think, wow, what, what an incredible, the first black president, an inspiring leader. And sure, he came in at a very challenging time and yeah. he's had his critics. But As I all think, leaders will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You come from the point of, you know, what was his intent and what was... Yeah, how did it feel? And when you listen to him, you knew he was coming from a great place. And, uh, you know, I look at that and I think that's what leadership's about is what is your intent? Mm. How well do you communicate it? And can you get people to follow you? And I think Obama, great intent, communicated it clearly and, and he actually got people out of their chairs to vote 
out of their chairs to try and do something. And mm. you know, he came in at a very tough time in the economy. Mm. And I think, you know, the first 50, 60, 70 percent of his of his tenure was dealing with that. But there's so many inspiring stories. Mm. So there's no excuse now. We um, have recently just partnered with CoreLogic Australia to hack into the current state of leadership, particularly in the real estate industry. And I know you said one of the things that's most important to you from what you think leaders and teams watching this could focus on is change and embracing change. What would you like to say about well, that? Well, yeah, we just had a, a great speaker downstairs at Eric Henry Mason. He's talked about what's happening around the world in different industries. And if it's happening in other industries, it's about it's going to happen in real estate sooner than later. Yeah. If it's happening in Uber and Airbnb, it's going to be happening in real estate. And people's expectations, and as he started, he said, it's no longer about, you know, your competitors. It's about why isn't your uh, service as good as Singapore Airlines? Yes. Why doesn't uh, Uber arrives in two minutes? Why does it take me 24 hours to get a contract from you yeah. in real estate? So people's expectations are being reset by a whole range of service experiences, which are rapidly improving. You know, the average age of most real to real estate principals in this country is probably 50 plus. It is. Well, according to this, it is. Yeah. yeah. So you look at that and you say, well, Therefore, this is not the kind of, you know, Gen X, Y, you know, young up and coming, grew up with a computer on my desk. These are people that didn't, didn't grow up in that way. And I think that therefore change is probably harder for this industry than some other younger industries sure. like marketing and technology and yeah. so forth. So I think as a principle, you've got to challenge yourself every day. You know, what are the trends? How good are you at keeping abreast of them? Every month I want to get what's happening around the world. And that's really important is your ability to, to, um, be on top of the trends, then think about not, well, that's what Uber are doing. Well, if Uber's doing that, how can I apply that to real estate? And also in terms of employing people, a lot of people that are 55 are employing 25 people. Mm. What are they expecting in terms of the internal customer experience? Sure. So, you know, very different. Once upon a time, someone got a job and stayed there until they retired. They got mm. a golden handshake and they retired at 65. Yeah. Nowadays, people are never retiring. They'll only stay as long as they think they're growing and mm -hmm. they're getting great service from you. They're very mobile. They want flexibility. They want to be able to have, you know, sort of time off and, and start a family and a whole range of things and mm. still dock into the workplace. So as an employer, you have to be ahead of the trends for your own internal customers as well as your external customers. Sure. I mean, you know, if you give your internal customer six-star service, the likelihood is they'll then pass that on. Yeah, there's a ripple effect. Mm -hmm. You and your team at Tread have done a remarkable job delivering time after time, year after year for 20 years, an extraordinary opportunity for us to all learn and grow. So thank you. My pleasure. What's next on your, your bucket list for well, much, yourself? Much the same. I mean, you know, we've got 100 offices now and we want to grow that number and we want to move to new markets. But more importantly, okay. we want to improve the service. As we just said, we're offering our internal customers as well as our external customers. So yeah events like this are just as good a uh, punctuation point for me and my management team okay. to think about the business. So you have to take time out of your busy week and you've got to stop and think from time to time. Are we on track? What are the next priorities? What mm. are the changes that are happening and how do we bring them into our business? Then communicate them. I guess I see my role as a bit like a creative director. Mm. It's about what are the trends? What's the brand? What do we want to represent? You know, what's our direction? And I'm working with our management team to execute all that. I was speaking yesterday to Leonard Steinberg, who gave the last speech yesterday afternoon. Brilliant guy, and he's one of the best agents in America. Now, he was saying to me, he does a, which is a brilliant idea, he does a daily memo to all the staff. I, that was us. the first thing he said. Uh, yeah, it's what incredible. did he say? Um, it was like a consideration, not words of genius, just something that's there for him to share. What's happening in the market? What yeah. are his insights? What are his observations? It's a daily. Now, I would say most principals don't even do that once a year. It's true. Now, whether you want to do it daily, weekly, monthly, you have a town hall once a week, but what is your method of communicating yeah. to your team? What are your thoughts? What are your feelings? You know, if you're a principal and you go to Eric, when you go back to the team, most of the other people probably weren't at Eric. So what are you going to share with them? Can you summarize on the plane going mm. back and then distribute and say, guys, here are five trends that I picked up. Mm. Now, you know, give us some input. How do you think we can bring these into the, into the workplace? What is on John McGrath's to-do list within the next 24 hours after attending ARIC? Well, we've got a boot camp tomorrow, but after that, so that'll be, you know, we have Tom Panos and I have some people come and we're yeah. going to kind of really go through an implementation, implementation strategy. Yeah. Um, for me, I'm just going through my notes each day and I'm asterisking the key things and then I'll kind of do a sub list of the asterisk and I'll do a sub list of the major ones. Mm. And then uh, exactly the same as I've said, you know, when I get back to our team that couldn't make it here and with our management team, debrief and say, 
what were the key trends, mm. what are we going to do about them? So it's all about curation because, you know, if you sat through here for two days and 20 odd speakers, you're going to potentially end up with two or three pages of notes for each speaker, which is 40 or 50 pages, yes. which is great because it washes <laughs> over you. But what are the three or four priorities that you're going to do? Because you can't do, you know, 40 pages no. of stuff but you can do three or four things. So for me, it'll be about curating the best ideas and then working out an implementation plan. Beautiful. Well, we look forward to more learning from Eric. Pleasure. I look forward to Eric. it as thank well. You and, to you and and your thank great you for team. this great presentation and oh, you're information. I'm going to look forward to reading it. Thanks, John. Thanks, Thanks again. Thank you, John. I hope you found that useful. If so, please like it and share it. And if you'd like access to the free downloadable tool, just click on the available link. If you also have any questions or challenges, specifically in the area of leadership or mindset, just write it in the comments below and where possible, I'll provide solutions to your requests. Remember, let love lead and you can turn your workforce into the life source of your business. I'll see you next week for more TMJ TV. Thank you.